I have a friend, Scott Davenport, and Scott and I have known each other for 10 years or more. He's a fighter. He lives down in Southern Oregon. He's also a trainer and a coach. He's got an upcoming match himself, but he reached out to me about a uh, speech, a motivational speech that I had given a, a number of years ago, and he asked me to make him a video and send that to him. He said, I heard you do it one time, but it wasn't on video. I, I've never seen it. I don't know where this speech was. I know the speech, but I don't know where I made this that he saw it. I don't know if it was a seminar, so there was no cameras. I, I don't actually know. But it is very relevant timing-wise that he's asking for this now because I'm just getting ready to give this to the Westland Wrestling Team. We're going into state tournament week. State championships are going to be contested Friday and Saturday. And so many coaches will tell you, it's very common for them to tell you, to, you're going to hear these buzzwords, control your emotions. You're going to hear buzzwords from coaches of focus, of get fired up, of be excited. It, it could all the way go down to, 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 to hard work and dedication. You're going to hear buzzwords from coaches. And what coaches do, and they're right to do this, they aren't wrong, but what they do is they will stare at a body of champions. And then coaches will find the commonalities amongst those champions, and then they will decry, this is what you must have to do. Because I'm looking at 10 champions, and this is what all 10 did do. So that's where the words like sacrifice, like hard work, like dedication, like confidence start to come from. The real truth in sport, and at some level, coaches, we expect the athlete to know this on their own. The real truth in sport is the only thing that you have to do is have more points than the other guy when time runs out. However you go about getting those, whether it came from hard work and dedication and sacrifice and faith, and fill in the blank, eating right, sleeping enough at night, having a good attitude, leadership. If you have more points than the other guy when time runs out in competition, they will raise your hand and you will move on to the next round. That is the only thing that you truly have to do. I will share with you as our team moves on to the state championship. The state championship is put in the second largest building, the second greatest arena in all of the state of Oregon. It seats 10,000 people. It will be completely sold out. It's where our professional basketball team, the Trailblazers, used to play. Now they play in the number one greatest building in Oregon, which they built on the same property, literally side by side next door, called the Rose Garden. But just to share with you, if you're a young high school kid and you're walking into the arena where the great sports athletes play, and now you're playing to the same sold-out arena and it is your first time, look, as a wrestler, you're usually performing in front of 80 to 100 people. You might have some classmates come out, the parents of the fellow teammates come out, but wrestling is not a heavily attended event, broad stroke, but it's not. When you walk in in front of 10,000 people, this is a many times a once in a lifetime opportunity. If you go under eligibility and you're a great wrestler and you make it all, it's a, it's a four time in a lifetime opportunity and for sure not beyond that. So now it comes down to always putting yourself mentally in a position where you know you can succeed. If you go in and you try to read a bracket ahead of time and you try to play out that bracket ahead of time and all of a sudden you're wrestling what you perceive to be match number three while you're in the first round of match number one, it's too daunting. It's too daunting. You've got to just stay in the moment. But for our wrestlers here in Oregon to get to the state tournament, they had to come through something called districts. Now, in other states, you, it's referred to as regionals. In some other parts of the country, it's referred to as the sectionals here in Oregon. We call it the districts. We call it the league championship. You must place in the top three within your league to advance to the state tournament. Okay, fine. But for all of our kids that are going to state that won districts, they do need to understand that all that the state tournament is, is the district tournament. It just represents that you could live in any district within the state and win that tournament. And if you weren't a district champion, then maybe you got to back it off a little bit. Okay, am I good enough to be the varsity guy? For sure. Do I know for sure that I am good enough to be the best guy in my weight class in my high school? 
Because if the answer is yes, the state tournament can be the viewed the same way. All we are attempting to find out at the state tournament is who could go to any high school within the state and just be the starting guy. Your parents happen to, wherever your house is, it could be anywhere in the state or whatever high school you feed into, you're the best guy in your high school. If you know that for sure, guy's not going to come to the high school and beat you for the spot. And all of a sudden, you're JV. If he's not going to beat you there, he's not going to beat you at districts. If he's not going to beat you at districts, he's not going to beat you at state. It's all the same thing. And some of the guys we got aren't the varsity guy. We got some JV guys through. So maybe you got to back it off a little bit. Am I the toughest guy in my house? If anybody comes in my house, can I out-wrestle that guy? Because if I can, this guy that I'm about to face can't walk into my house and beat me. Then he can't beat me for the starting lineup. He can't beat me at the district tournament, and he can't beat me at the state tournament. It's all the same thing. It's the same guy. Maybe you live in a tough house. Maybe am I the toughest guy in my house? The answer for you is no. Maybe you got an older brother. Maybe you got to back it up a little bit more. Am I the toughest guy in my bedroom? For sure. Do I know this for sure? I'm the baddest dude in this bedroom. Because if the answer is yes, then you're good enough to make the starting lineup. You're good enough to win districts and you're good enough to win state. It's the same guys. Does this guy get to walk into your bedroom? All of a sudden he takes the remote control. You're sleeping on the floor. He takes the bed. I mean, for most of our athletes, that would be silly. That would be crazy. They'd say, no way, I will defend my bedroom. Okay, great. Put yourself in the mindset of wherever you know you're the best. Are you the toughest kid on your street? Are you the toughest kid on the playground? Whatever it might be. If the guy can't show up to your street, if he can't show up to your playground, if he can't show up to your bedroom, if he can't show up to your high school, it's the same thing. All we're trying to figure out as state is who's the toughest kid in his bedroom as long as he lived anywhere within the state. And when you start breaking it down on some of these smaller levels, these athletes have a level of confidence that comes somewhere. Perhaps they don't know how far they can go. That's a lot of times what this is about. But I will tell you, at least here in Oregon, our state tournament is presented from a marketing standpoint as the best wrestlers are the ones that are going to become all state. They're going to place. They're going to leave with some level of hardware from 6th, 7th, 8th, 4th, all the way up to the championship. They're going to leave with something, the best wrestlers in the state. That is a myth. That is nothing more than a marketing ploy. It has never been about who is the best wrestler. It has always been about who wrestles the best. Everybody is going to have pressure. And while coaches love to tell you that you can control emotion, if you knew how to control emotion, you would be called a psychopath. You don't want to know how to control emotion. You want to be a human being that has every emotion. You want to be able to be happy. You want to be sad sometimes. You want to be scared. You want to be excited. You want to be able to have every emotion that a human being is supposed to be able to have without being some kind of a sociopath. Don't worry about controlling your emotions. It was about 25 years ago, some con man came along and wrote a book. And the book's premise was essentially that Sports in particular, but life in general, is 80% physical and only 20% mental. But we spend 80% of our time on the physical and only 20% on the mental. Okay, that book did really good sales. Sales. It went on and influenced people who have become parents, who have become teachers, who have become coaches. So then they regurgitate it, package it up, and feed it back to the kids. It's a bunch of crap. It was crap when that scumbag con man wrote it in the first place. The whole thing, particularly as it pertains to sport, is physical. All of it. 100%. 0% is mental. It's just a fun thing to say. It sounds powerful and innovative when you say it, particularly 25 years ago, when it was first said. It's not true. There has never been a time, particularly in the sport of wrestling, which I'm specifically talking about, but feel free to take that and carry it over to any sport that you enjoy or that you participate in. There has never been a time where a young man walks onto the mat. The referee looks over and goes, whoa, that guy looks confident. Not only confident, he looks excited. He looks happy to be here. And then looks to the other corner and goes, that guy looks scared. That guy looks like he's dealing with some pressure. That guy looks like he'd rather be anywhere else. You know what? Two points, confident guy. What the? It doesn't work that way. It doesn't make a damn bit of difference how you feel. None. 
It's all physical. Did you bend your knees? Did you put your hand up? Are you coming forward? Did you take one man off his feet against his will? Yes or no? Did you turn his shoulders towards the mat? Yes or no? You don't have to feel good doing it. You don't have to be confident doing it. You don't even have to want to be there doing it. I mean, ultimately in sports, you would get an athlete who not only wants to do it, he will view it as he gets to do it. Most athletes will look at it as, I, I have to do this. I've agreed to do it. The time is now. I have to go do this. That's fine too. If you could get an athlete who didn't look at it as, I have to do this, I get to do this, and ultimately I want to do this, you've won. Congratulations. Go write your own book. But either way, I'm still right. You either got that ball into the end zone or you didn't. And you didn't get it there through being confident that you could. And you didn't get there by having a great attitude and thinking that you did it. You grabbed the son of a bitch, put your head down, and ran through whoever was in front of you and got the ball there. Six points go up. That's physical. Who do you think is going to get more benefit? The guy that goes, I love to run. I cannot wait to go running tonight. I am so excited to run five miles. Oh, look at this. My favorite show's on TV. I didn't know that was on. I think I'm going to go watch that instead. Versus the guy that goes, man, I hate running. I have a terrible attitude. I don't want to do it. I don't even know that I can. I don't even know that I can go five miles. Where are my shoes at? Put my shoes on, go outside, come back five miles later. Who do you think won that? The guy with the right attitude or the guy who physically went and did it? Who burned more calories? Who got in better shape? Who's better? Who's the t- who, who would you rather be? The guy with the great attitude or the bad attitude? But bad attitude went and did it. Great attitude stayed on the couch with his great attitude. Good for him. I'm sure he's having a great life. Most people aren't built that way. Most people experience different emotions, none of which they can control. What does one have to do with the other? It's not mental, guys. It is physical. It is all physical. You did it or you didn't. Actions are real. Emotions are fake. They're completely fake. You might have that voice in your head that's telling you negative things. You can't get rid of them. Some people are built that way. Some people are optimists. Some people are pessimists. What's the difference? Grab that ball, cross that line, and they'll throw up six points. I would always encourage our athletes to be, I would encourage our athletes to care less. I would not encourage them to be careless. I would encourage them to care less in any relationship. Any relationship. It could be a marriage, it could be a business. Anytime where two people come together. It could be a sporting event. Any relationship, there is power to whichever party cares less. Not the party that cares more. The party that cares more is at the disadvantage in any relationship. The time to care is in practice. The time to care is in the summertime. The time to care is in the weight room. The time to care is at 5 a.m. before school when you don't want to get up and go running, but you do it anyway. That is the time to care. On competition day, if you can care less, if you can be more playful, If you don't think about the outcome, you think about the performance. You are in a much more powerful position than your opposition. It's not rocket science. It's also not mental. You either go out there physically, you get those points, or you don't. 